Hello, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to our channel. It's very good to have you here. In this video, we are going to have a look at detailed comparison between air-cooled, oil-cooled, and water-cooled engines. We will be looking at the construction of each, the benefits they have, and the disadvantages associated with their construction and design. But before we go to the details, let's answer the question, why do engines even need cooling? Well, the answer lies on what is happening inside the engine. The chemical reaction that is happening inside the engine during combustion is an exothermic reaction that releases tremendous amount of heat. The heat that will be released from the combustion, it will get transferred to the engine components. Now, if the engine components are left unattended, that will lead to engine overheating. The other thing that causes engine overheating is friction. There is plenty of friction happening inside the engine. By far, the largest source of friction inside the engine is the sliding of the piston rings against the cylinder wall. The faster the piston rings rub against the cylinder wall, the more friction and heat they generate. Now, if that heat is left uncontrolled, it will lead to engine overheating. And engine overheating will eventually going to cause engine parts to expand, they will start to seize, and even some components start to melt. So it's obvious engine overheating is going to distort the parts of the engine leading to catastrophic engine failure. So what do we do to control that heat? We use a dedicated cooling system to remove the excess heat. Now there are three types of engine cooling systems that are currently used. Air cooling, and oil cooled and water cooling. Let's see each one by one. Air cooling. Air cooling is the earliest and the simplest method of cooling an engine. It uses an already available air that is surrounding the engine. This means that the air-cooled engine does not need any additional cooling equipment like liquids, coolant containers, hoses, water pump, radiator, and other components. Air-cooled engines cool themselves simply by being in contact with the surrounding air and transferring their heat onto this air. You can easily recognize an air-cooled engine by looking at the fins that are available on the cylinder head and on the engine block. Fins are used to increase the surface area over which air can pass and heat exchange can occur. By increasing the outer surface area, we increase the space over which heat can be distributed and dissipated. And that is the basics of air cooling. If you expose much area to the incoming air, then you can dissipate more heat. Now there are advantages associated with air cooling. Obviously, the first advantage is that because air-cooled engines are using very minimum components, they are simple to construct. They are lightweight because of elimination of heavier engine components like radiator, water pump, passage, and so forth. And their maintenance is also very simple. As a result, their cost of production is very low. That is why we have multiple air-cooled engines that are being used on small-scale engine manufacturing process and lightweight engines. There is a disadvantage associated with air cooling also. The main disadvantage is uneven cooling. Now if you imagine an air cooled engine in the stream of air, we can see that the front part which is exposed to the incoming air will have better cooling, but the back part of the engine which isn't in direct contact with the incoming air doesn't get cooled so well. Cooling will be greatly reduced when engine is stationary. That's why there is a tendency of engine overheating. So, air-cooled engines are susceptible to overheating if they get stuck in slow-moving traffic. Well, there are engines where this issue can be addressed by installing fans, but installing fan will be adding another load to the engine, and it will also increase the complexity and production cost. The other disadvantage of air cooling is that they have limited cooling capacity. We are limited in the extent to which we can increase the outer surface area of the engine with fins. To overcome this limited cooling capacity, there are engines that are using rich air fuel mixture. The more fuel we introduce into the engine, the cooler the engine is going to run. This is basically because if there is much amount of fuel in the air fuel mixture, fuel will vaporize absorbs a relatively large amount of heat from the surrounding, from the cylinders, and this then reduces temperature. Well, this phenomenon is known as evaporative cooling. 
but there are other problems associated with running rich. Running rich will increase hydrocarbon emission. So that can be also considered as a disadvantage. Air-cooled engines typically require more time to reach operating temperature. When cold engine is started because of their cooling system always running, the fins are always there and the air is always around the engine, you cannot turn off any of those things. And this is why air-cooled engines require relatively longer running time in order to attain their operating temperature. This will also increase hydrocarbon emission because running a cold engine will somehow increase hydrocarbon emission because the temperature will not be sufficient enough to fully vaporize and combust the air fuel mixture. So these are some of the disadvantages associated with air cold. Now let's have a look at oil cooled engines. Oil cooled engines are also air cooled and on almost all oil cooled engines you will find same air cooling fins that you can find on an air cooled engine. So what is the difference? The basic difference between an oil cooled engine and an air cooled engine is that oil cooled engine will have an oil that is circulated through dedicated channels by clear intent of cooling rather than lubricating the engine. And to do this we have an oil cooler we have large volume of oil circulating through dedicated channels that way heat will be dissipated from the engine to the incoming air. The best sign of an oil cooled engine will be the oil capacity increment. Increased oil capacity is the main difference. We have increased oil capacity and in oil cooled engines we also need powerful oil pump. The oil pump circulates oil at high pressure to ensure lubrication and also it has to circulate the oil at extremely large volume to ensure optimum cooling. The cooling side has dedicated channels which fall in the vicinity of the combustion chamber. The main source of heat as we have previously mentioned is the combustion of air fuel mixture inside the cylinder. So by having dedicated oil passage channels around the vicinity of the combustion chamber, we can remove the heat that is generated inside the cylinder. And they cool it by circulating large volume of oil quickly all around the chamber. Now the cooling channel also features small ridges which can act as a boundary layer breaker. They prevent a zero velocity boundary layer from forming directly on the surface of the cooling channel and reducing the efficiency of the heat exchange. After this, oil circulates through an oil cooler, which is essentially a radiator. And a radiator is another device that relies on increased surface area to maximize heat exchange with the air passing through and over it. In the oil cooler, the oil is distributed to multiple thin tubes that go through the radiator. And these tubes have an extremely large number of very small fins attached to them. Now, the oil transfers its heat away to the tubes and the tubes transfer it to the fins and then the fins are cooled by the air. In this respect, you can say that all engines are ultimately air-cooled. And the oil is only used to store the heat and transport it away from the source to the radiator. So, when compared, oil cooling has advantage of being able to circulate all around the combustion chamber, take the heat away right from the source and evenly cool all parts of the engine. Now we have previously said the one disadvantage mentioned in the air cooling is that there is uneven cooling. But when it comes to oil cool, because of the uniform flow around the combustion chamber and because of the high volume of oil circulation, then we have a possibility of attaining even cooling. Now the downside of this oil cooling system is increased complexity and production cost when compared to air-cooled engine. Increased servicing cost due to increasing oil capacity. There is another drawback to oil cooling. Oil have a smaller heat absorbing ability when compared to water. The oil will absorb energy from the heat and the temperature of the oil itself increases faster than it would increase when water is used. Water can absorb twice the amount of heat before its temperature starts increasing, making water the ideal solution for cooling engines. Now this will take us to the water-cooled engines. 
modern engines tend to run closer to the stoichiometric air fuel ratio, that is, around 14.7 grams of air to 1 gram of fuel. In order to increase efficiency and reduce fuel consumption, modern engines are running in the vicinity of this stoichiometric air fuel ratio. But the closer we are to the stoichiometric air fuel ratio, the higher the heat generated by combustion, because we are approaching nearly complete combustion by having this air fuel mixture. Forced induction in the form of turbocharging or supercharging, together with high revolution at which modern engines are running, produces increased heat again. As we have mentioned earlier, when engines are running fast, piston rings are rubbing against the cylinder or fast, and that will even generate additional extra heat. And all of this together with ever-increasing demand of power, efficiency, and reduced emission tend to make modern engines run very hot. And in most cases, oil simply isn't adequate to absorb all the heat generated by the engine. And this is where water cooling comes in handy. Now, in water-cooled engines, oil now has only a secondary minor role in cooling the engine. And the main task of oil will be lubricating. The main task of cooling belongs to water. Water circulates through dedicated channels known as water jackets all around the engine block in the cylinder head, meaning that it absorbs heat quickly and efficiently from all around and cools the engine evenly. So by far, from the materials that are available, water is the best cooler. Now, water alone doesn't circulate through the engine. It's actually a mixture of water and antifreeze. As the name suggests, antifreeze prevents the water from freezing. When water turns into ice, it expands. So if water were to freeze inside the engine block, it would likely crack the engine block. Antifreeze also serves as rust inhibitor and prevents corrosion which would occur inside the engine if water alone was used in the cooling system. To ensure proper circulation, a water pump is also necessary and it's usually driven by the crankshaft via a belt. Also, in more recent vehicles, the water pump can also be electronically driven. The coolant water is passed through a radiator. A radiator is simply a heat exchanger. It dissipates the heat absorbed from the engine into the surrounding air. Another key component of water cooling is the thermostat. And it ensures that water doesn't circulate through the radiator until the engine reaches optimal operating temperature. This reduces emission and engine width by dramatically reducing the time it takes the engine to reach operating temperature. So dear viewers, what would you say? Which one is the best cooling system? Hands on, water cooling is by far the most efficient and capable engine cooling system. And this is why modern engines have it. But there are also disadvantages when it comes to water cooling. Increased production cost, increased maintenance, an increased number of parts required for water cooling can be mentioned as a disadvantage when compared to air-cooled and oil-cooled engines. And there you have it, the disadvantages and advantages associated with the different cooling systems. Well, this is all we have for you in this presentation. If you like this video, smash the like button. If you are new to this channel, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notification so that you will be notified whenever we come up with another video. Share it with friends so that others can also benefit from the contents that are presented in this video. Till we see you in another video, stay safe.